I know that race and uh, the idea that race is basically just a social construct is a lot of what informs your work. What What is it about that topic that keeps you returning back to it so frequently? I think especially within the United States, race plays a huge factor in the way that everyone is socialized and navigates the world. And I think um, as I've traveled outside the world, going to different countries, I realize how the blackness and whiteness mean something different. And there's all these different nuances depending on the country you go to. And I'm really interested in trying to explode narrow perspectives of blackness and whiteness and otherness in general and really talk about humanity. And so I think first I have to like focus on the absurdity of race um, in order to kind of challenge it. Now, Nicola, why do you think it's so important for an artist like Hank to try to start provoking these types of conversations? Well, I've always thought that the artist is meant to be the mirror for society. Mm. And at any given point, the artist is supposed to reveal certain truths about society to society itself. And in many ways, they foreshadow. You know, and that's what I like about the artists. They are sort of, you know, they, they, they look ahead, way ahead. And so what the Hank is doing is inevitably sort of, you know, uh, of great importance to yeah. society. It's true. There, and oftentimes, many times, a lot of the good ones are prophets. Indeed, exactly. <laughs> now, Hank, I know your work is pretty provocative, and you like to stir the pot. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> to say the least. Your piece, Strange Fruit, comes to mind. Um, but I know that you've said somewhere that, and this is a quote, you take pleasure in talking about things that people say we don't need to talk about anymore. Just because we think we're over race doesn't really mean that we're over it at all. So do you still take pleasure in that conversation? And what is it about you that likes to provoke? Yeah, I guess I'm just one of those people that people are just like, aren't we over that? And just like, for me, if we were over it, we wouldn't be dealing with it in so many real ways. And I think especially when it comes to race and also gender issues, um, there's so many very clear ways that certain people are limited and in, in, uh, in, uh, categorized in, in, in challenging ways. And I think I'm really trying to explode those ideas. One of your iconic pieces that I think a lot of people are familiar with is your African-American athlete branded with a Nike emblem on his chest. Why did you decide to do something like that? And what is the reaction you're getting from someone like Nike or MasterCard or whoever you're working with? Yeah, I, with my work I use, I often say that I'm trying to use the language of advertising to talk about things that advertising couldn't responsibly talk about. Mm. And <laughs> thinking about how slaves were branded as a sign of ownership and how wow. today so many of us brand ourselves and live in an age of branded consciousness and really thinking about how we can talk about, this, especially with the way so many products are marketed through black bodies and thinking mm. about the connection between um, seeing objects on black bodies in sports and entertainment that have been like, basically it's about selling cotton, you know, the merchandise industry mm. and thinking about the relationship to, you know, their ancestors on, on the fields in the United States picking cotton. So really trying to like bring history forward with the work is really wow. a major goal of mine. That's deep. Well, at least they're getting paid a little bit better now. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> all, th all 300 of them. All wow. 300 right, of them. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Now, Hank, your mother, Deborah Willis, is not only a celebrated photographer, she's a MacArthur genius, wow. and she's the head of NYU's photography department, correct? Yeah. Uh, what was that like, following in her footsteps? I mean, those are pretty big shoes to fill. Yeah, I mean, I had the really wonderful advantage of having two parents uh, who basically lived their lives against all not, all practical reason. And, so you know, if you said you were going to run off to the circus, they probably would have been far more okay with it than my parents would have been. <laughs> They're like, which, which circus? Which circus? <laughs> <laughs> um, but really, that, that was the thing that they were, my mom was told that she should just be a secretary at City Hall. That would be the, the greatest thing that she mm. could ever achieve. My father was the first black person to bag groceries at the AMP in South Florence, wow. South Carolina. Wow. He got his PhD in physics from Columbia. She's the one at MacArthur and Guggenheim. And really, all the while they, you know, enjoyed their lives, you know, and kind of it wasn't easy, but took, you know, that, but just saw opportunity for what it was. And I think for me, um, I had no choice but to follow in that. All right, cool. And Fantastic. Nicola, let, let talk, well, let's talk a little bit about your new exhibit coming up called Black Eye. Yes. Tell us about that. Well, Black Eye is an interesting proposition. It's something that I'd been thinking about for a very long time and sort of came to head after looking at the election process and finally the inauguration process, <coughs> which, which sort of uh, compressed itself into a tagline that I like to call, uh, this black man must save the world mm -hmm. in 11 months. Wow. And so I thought, hey, you know, this is very interesting because you have a, a number of poles of a black identity, particularly black male 
uh, identity mm -hmm. uh, sort of experience. And one being, of course, Obama, who holds the most powerful seat in the world. Another sort of being the old school tradition, you know, the embattled, the sort of tortured, the scarred uh, members of that society who are not quick to forget what, what you know, how they've been treated societally. And then you have this third pole that's a bit like uh, this uh, hybrid explosion, this newness, you know, uh, it's a bit, I mean, would you call them blips? That's Hank, I don't know, but they're a mix <laughs> of... Hipsters, black uh, hipsters. hipsters. Okay, like they are like that's a, a good one. Yeah, they're like a pop expression, and they don't necessarily have the same sorts of um, history uh, uh, memory. And that, angst around race. And angst, right. exactly. Mm -hmm. And so this triangulation is, is very interesting to me, and the subsets that descend from them, mm -hmm. particularly. And so, of course, Hank, for example, is participating because these points of view are important, and, and the, mm -hmm. this, the movement, the, the, the relativity, the shift of it is, is so profound, you know, this newness of spirit. Okay. Is, well, is, is, I'm trying to really point out that we have moved away from the identity of, of foundering to forging. Now, I know that Hank is one of the A-list artists featured, but Absolutely. you've got a slew of them. Kara Walker, Micheline Thomas, Kahinde Wiley, and Lorna Simpson, Sanford Biggers. I mean, these are the creme de la creme of artists out there right now. Absolutely. How did you manage to pull all of these people together? Well, I can't answer that. Okay. <laughs> hey, you can answer that, and then we'll have Nicola <laughs> chime in. When Nicola calls, you answer. You go. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's nice. Well, it's exciting because I've known all these artists for as long as I've been in the art world. And, you know, I sort of think we've come along in the struggle in this business together, sometimes running parallel courses. And um, I think what's most interesting is that they have something very important to say. These are the artists who, to me, define the, the two-pronged approach that I'm taking with this exhibition. The first being, uh, of course, the conscious conceptual level, but then the market force that these artists provide the art world is something that's not often spoken about. And I come from a commercial dealer side, so that's important to show the nuclear power of that unity financially, economically, and conceptually. Mm. Mm. Now, you spoke a little bit earlier about President Barack Obama, and it's always interesting to see how these artists kind of, you know, interpret the black president in the White House. What would you both say has been some of the more shocking things that you've seen around the country of some of the artists depicting his election? And what's intrigued you? What's yeah. been really interesting? You showed I mean, us the photo that was really yeah. cool, a, a, an image of the president made up of Fruit Loops. Yeah, I mean, there's just, the thing about the election of Barack Obama is that it basically, as we all know, is a paradigm shift for so many reasons. I like to point out that I think that our previous president did so bad mm -hmm. that he just ruined the white male brand. <laughs> and that literally anybody who came next was going to be either the first woman, the first, you know, uh, the second uh, Catholic, the first Italian, you mm -hmm. know, now we have the first multi ethnic president and, and I feel like that's really important to point out that he's not just a quote-unquote black American that he has a much more complex identity and it puts the onus on all of us not to see things in a binary simplistic way and I think um, what I really one of the pieces I've done with in collaboration with another artist named Ryan Alexia is we did this piece called Breakfast of Champion which was uh, a portrait of Obama in cereal like Fruit Loops and everything like that and really it was about kind of this amazing I think that his campaign was the most successful advertising campaign of all time. Really? To go Why do you from, say that? That's, now that's another provocative statement, right. Hank. <laughs> to go from like relative obscurity to being the most powerful person in the world, mm -hmm. it's my humble opinion that I think he took the best of like Apple marketing and like uh, and Nike and like put that together into like be something that we could all believe in. Barack I, Obama right. just do it. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so I mean, so in my in my and so basically he came up through Chicago at the same time that Oprah hit it big and, and that um, Michael Jordan hit it big. And that's like, he became this transracial, transcultural figure that so many people have lionized. Um, and I think I'm more, imp the volume of the ways he's been represented is probably, there's only Lincoln and, and Kennedy who probably had that that much adoration. Well, Nicola, how does it feel personally to be bringing this, you know, social conscious issues to people's minds in art form? You know, it's different than just preaching at somebody. You're bringing it to them in a beautiful way. How does that feel? It feels really powerful, I have to say. Mm -hmm. it, it, for me, it feels like the convergence of all my years in the art world. And 
you know, to have the opportunity to work with these artists is, is, is for me, a dream come true. It represents the next sort of phase, I think, in my curatorial career, my commercial career, and of course, sort of just putting this, this on the table will be quite, uh, quite a stance, you know, a social position, which is not something that people often do in the art world. So, wow. yes, it is, uh, it's, uh, it's, it, I think it's, it's a new time. life -changing. It's a new time. Basically, yeah. whatever, there was before 2008 and after 2008. And yes. right. the responsibility on all of us to think bigger and do more is, right. is like... Super important. Yeah. It I is. mean, when we were growing up, it wasn't, we didn't see a world that we could change that way because our parents' generation did so much. Mm -hmm. And now we have that power. We do, and we have to enforce it. Well, let's get some go. of the basics out of yeah. the way, though, yes. Nikki. Where can we see the show? Yes. When does it begin? Yes. How long will it run? Well, uh, it's, I'm sort of going back to my roots downtown. That's where I had my beginnings okay. in the art world. Okay. So it'll be in Soho at, uh, on Crosby Street. It'll open on May 1st. It'll run through May 31st. And we'll have a slew of activities planned for the month. So, oh, yeah, right. it's very exciting. Well, we'll make sure we check that out. Thank you both for being here. Oh, thank you. And up next, we have our movie man, Mike Sargent. Will Oz be great and powerful at the box office or a magical flop? Plus, he'll also have exclusive interviews with acting legends Melvin Van Peebles and Harry Belafonte. Stay tuned. You're watching Arise 360 Entertainment.